Hey everyone, my name is Ethan Alloway from Matterform Inc. and want to say a big special thanks to the Stage Precision team for sponsoring these videos on SP. It's been really fun getting to exemplify how great of a program that it is and also just how cool the tools are for interoperability's sake. Um, in this episode, we're going to be going over timelines and really deep diving on how you can externalize your timelining system. Big advantages to that are that if you have a client who needs to make changes on site, you can just make those changes in the other control app and not have to worry about uh, changing the timelines inside of your currently running app. This is really good for Touch Designer, also for Unreal Engine and other programs. Um, I use this all the time. If I can externalize my control, it is just so much easier, um, especially when you have revisions being made, especially when someone's right behind you asking for changes. You can just scooch a little keyframe over and it's super helpful. So in this video, we're going to go into that. We're going to go into some other little fun details. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. All right, so in Touch Designer, let's create an OSC input. And let's also create an OSC IO in stage precision. So in SP, we're going to name our remote port 10001. And then in Touch Designer, we're going to also make our remote port 10001. Let's make our local address 12127001. And then let's create a button. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an action. And an action is going to allow us to send OSC on every click. Here we're able to send a one on the down and then on the up, we're also going to send a zero instead. So let me copy this over to a new event. Here's the on up. Copy that by clicking on the circle with the line in it. You can copy and paste through that little interface. So now we're adding a on up trigger and that allows us to turn it on and off. Next, let's do a slider. To uh, grab these little nodes, you're able to grab the edge. Sometimes it's really tough to grab it. And now let's go to the events and we're gonna use the default event, which is on slider changed. Let's just name that slider. And that one is working perfectly right out of the box. All right, now let's add a drop down. So inside of this drop down, I have to click on the edge of that. Let's see, there we go. Go to events. Let me change these colors real quick. This is kind of dark. All right, so we're gonna click events. We're gonna go to on value change. This is every time that the value changes, it's gonna send an event. We're gonna call this one slash drop down. And let's send a message of zero first. So we don't have anything to click on yet. So let's add some entries to this drop down. Here, let's do uh, A, B, and C. And then values, let's do one, two, and three. So now as we click between these three values, it's gonna send just zero. And that's because we want to change that to a, an actual target. So let's grab this target, we'll pull it over to this dropdown. And we're gonna grab the value of the dropdown as the value that we're sending. And as you can see, it's working really well here. That's because we are referencing every time it changes, it's what that value is that we've changed. All right, so now let's add another operator. Let's use color. So change of color, you're able to click on the actual GUI. Now we're able to also use on color changed as the event and actions send it out as OSC. And here we are SP color. Great, we're sending three, four values of 255. Let's change this to a float. Here we're able to get zero to one, which Touch Designer likes a lot. So let's just select RGB float. All right, now let's create another interface. And we're gonna add an image provider. An image provider is 
an ability to take an image input. Um, to do that, we're going to go down to the uh, IO connections and let's go down to image provider and take a media input over NDI. Here we have NDI receiver and then let's just grab the stream. So in touch designer, let's now go over and create some video for it to look at. You just select. Let's get this count. It's a nice little video to look at. And then let's right click on here and let's add an NDI output. Perfect. So that's going, everything should be good. Now let's take this provider and we're gonna set it to the media input. Great, so now we're able to see Touch Designer's output inside of Stage Precision. This is super helpful for trying to get feedback backwards. Um, this allows us also just to have like basic viewers and information. Here we're able to add a cue list. This is pretty neat. You're able to add multiple stages um, through something. If you just need like next, 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 and it to change all the different variables. This is a really good method for doing that. We can create a variable here in the pool. Grab that variable, select it, and we're able to actually replace it. Let's set the next variable. Let me copy this instead, actually, it's a little quicker. Use paste. And then we're able to do one, two, and three. So in this case, you'd be able to just step through one, two, three, just like this, and change all of our different cues for this. So now let's take a look at timelines. This is a super useful method for controlling Touch Designer. We're actually able to create um, keyframeable timelines, which are dynamic and can be reorganized really easily. So here, let's click on timeline and let's add a trigger layer. Inside of this, we're gonna select on timeline trigger and let's make some OSC messages to come out. So let's do trigger, let's send an integer of one. Let me just call this trigger. Okay, great. If you press um, Control D, you're able to duplicate triggers across. It's a really quick little way to grab things. So we'll put that at the beginning, let's duplicate it. Now let's make the second one trigger two. And then trigger three. And let's do four. And there we go, we've got one coming in, press B trigger. As you can see, I jumped around a little too quick. Here we go, so now I got two. You need just enough lead in time for it to work. Here's three. Okay. What we're able to do is rename these by double clicking on them. And then we can reorganize them super easily. So we can scooch them over, select them all, bring them really close. And imagine that you're here with the client breathing down your neck and you need to reorganize something where well, you don't have to jump into Touch Designer under your project. You're just able to change the show flow super easily. So what we can do is we can really simply just reorganize the order of these cues um, or these triggers so we can have them go in any order that we want really dynamically and easily. And one thing to consider is that this timeline is able to follow LTC as an input trigger. So if you have a show that's required to be locked in on time on the time code, these could also follow triggers for like a lighting console or for DMX um, systems as well. So now let's try a different type of trigger. We are going to update a uh, parameter, or a, a variable I mean. So let's grab this guy Let's create a new variable. We're gonna call this one color. 
And let's go to select it as a color variable. Let's expand this. And then the board, let's go over our color we created earlier. And we're going to select it. We can just uh, go to the color field. Let's right click and we're going to change the control mode. Changing the control mode to a variable allows us to have an overwritable variable, which is super convenient for just changing things on the fly. Uh, but they also update over in Touch Designer as well, which is really nice. So in Touch Designer, let's go through and create a constant. And we're gonna grab these one at a time and reference them over. Perfect. So our colors match and they're also bound in real time, which is super nice. So now what we're able to do is we're able to go into our trigger and let's rename this as red. Oops. And then let's change that color to red on the uh, display. It's just easier to be able to tell which one's which. Let's grab that target value that target variable, and then let's change that color over to red. Perfect. So now we can do is we can duplicate this, grab it, bring it down. Let's change that over to green. Let's rename it to green. And then once more, make this one blue. And then in the timeline trigger, let's change this over to blue. Perfect. So now in our timeline, we're able to play it back and then have it change colors. So now what we're able to do is let's create another trigger from scratch and let's go to motion. Actually, let's go to parameter and let's morph the parameter so this is very cool. We can grab this parameter and let's select its color as the target. What we can do is we can select it to be black and then we can call it fade to black. And what this is gonna do is this actually fades whatever color is on and then replaces it with black at the end. So let's play this out and see what happens. So we have red, green, Blue, awesome. And then there we go, it's a fade black. So what that's able to do is over the course of one second, it's gonna fade whatever color is on screen into black. You can make all these triggers go dynamically in any order that you want. So here we've got red, green, let's fade to black, and then now pop into blue. So these are really useful ways where you can control touch designer using stage precision. And uh, SP is just so convenient for being able to do things like this um, so efficiently and uh, just to be able to do it out of the app as well so you can control your software remotely even better. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private 